think it's a very sad reflection of the state of our democracy. And, you know, for me, it really says, well, what's driving this? Why have we lost the glue that holds us together as a society? And what comes to my mind foremost is that um, so many people are really being thrown under the bus and feel like they have been thrown under bus, the bus by the economic elites and their bought politicians. You know, the political system is widely perceived as being bought and paid for by Wall Street, the war machine, whatever. But you have 60% of people who are living paycheck to paycheck. You have homelessness at a record high, half of renters who are struggling just to make the payment to keep the roof over their head. Child poverty has doubled. Uh, youth are, you know, 100 million are, I'm sorry, 44 million are locked in student debt. You have 100 million locked in, in medical debt. You know, I think people really feel like they are at the end of their rope and very much under attack by our political system and that we really don't have a democracy. And I think this really, you know, it's, it's a feeling towards uh, Joe Biden as well as Donald Trump. And I think, in fact, our democracy is very much, you know, on its last legs uh, and needs to be revived, needs to be rescued. And we see this in the polls, too, where 60 percent of people on, are now saying that the two-party establishment has failed us and we need a party that actually serves the people. Yeah. And one last, you know, figure here is that just last week we saw a poll from USA Today saying that 20 percent of Hispanics, 20 percent of African Americans and 21 percent of youth have already declared that they are voting third party. They are out of this uh, two party trap. Uh, Dr. Sun, I hear you on the need for a third party candidate. I want to ask you on the campaign trail today, former President Trump is referring to the January 6th defendants as hostages. What is your reaction to that? Um, you know, I, I think that's uh, Donald Trump being uh, Donald Trump and making the most of this um, uh, PR moment that unfortunately he has now. And with his, you know, being thrown off the ballot in several states. In addition, this is a real drama for him to play, uh, you know, to the hilt. And I think that's that's what he's doing. It's unfortunate. It continues to uh, polarize people and doesn't really get to what the real root is of the, you know, the just the dismay and the distress with the state of our democracy, which is inseparable from the state of our economy. Dr. Stein, do you buy into the notion that a third party candidate can hurt one candidate over the other? Because some believe that your candidacy in 2016 steered votes away from Hillary Clinton. What are your thoughts on that? Well, that's actually contrary to the facts, you know, and if you know people who voted third party, you know that they would not have voted for the most part. And this is supported by the polls that show that over 60 percent of people who voted green just would not have come out. And I think it's it's really anti-democratic to suggest that voters don't have a right to choose. Voters do have a right to choose who to vote for and to try to shove down the throats of voters two candidates two zombie candidates from two zombie parties that really have been serving the economic elites very well whose wealth is going off the charts if you are a fortunate member of the upper 10 or 15 percent but ordinary americans right now are really struggling to survive and are very hungry for choices and in fact they are making those choices right now i think it's incredibly um arrogant of the uh, democrats to say that your vote belongs to them they have to earn your vote they don't own your vote and don't let them manipulate you or extort you into voting for interests that are not serving your interests yeah how would you respond to some democrats assertion that your candidacy would be taking away much needed votes uh, for president biden this time around well, actually, people are already fleeing Biden. You may have heard of the abandoned Biden movement. But, but certainly perhaps your candidacy, just, and I'm sorry to interrupt, may not be helping. 
Um, helping what? You know, I'm helping voters. Who 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 is this system for? Is it for the candidates who happen to be in power now, who've done such a horrible job with our economy? Uh, Joe Biden, who said he would bail out young people and then he he failed to do so, who said he would uh, raise the um, minimum wage to a living wage, who dropped that, who said he would provide a public option on health care, who's not doing that, you know, who said he would be a friend of the environment, but who's actually building 22 LNG plants, liquid natural natural gas export facilities that is the equivalent of 440 coal plants. So he's totally gone back on his promises. Not that he's better than the Republicans. They don't make those promises in the first place. But the American people are off the charts now in demanding that they have other options. 63% of Americans now actually say they want another party that serves the people because the two that we have have done such a bad job of serving ordinary working people. So I think it's anti-democratic to say that democracy is supposed to serve the political elites rather than serve everyday working people and voters. That's who the system is for. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.